We are just about to dive into our first port security lab with that information on the board regarding the IP addresses and the MAC addresses of host 1 and 2. We only want to use port security to authenticate host 1, so we're going to be concentrating our efforts on the switch on fast 0 slash 1. And of course in the exam room, just like in the real world, I might be giving you information in a diagram you don't necessarily need. And we really don't need the MAC address of host 2 for this lab, but I just put it up there for you anyway. A couple of things I did off screen. I did send a ping from 1 to 2. Everything's fine there. Our connectivity is wonderful. And on the switch, I have totally initialized that, except for giving it a host name when it came back up. So I haven't done anything with port security, and we should expect the switch to be at its defaults. Before I even start configuring that port, though, remind me, what command should I use? to make sure I'm configuring the port that leads to the host that I think I'm configuring. Right, show CDP neighbor never hurts to run that one more time, even though I didn't run any cables, but change any cable runnings, but I did want to remind you of this. So we are definitely working on local interface 0 slash 1. And the first thing I am actually going to do is shut the port while I put port security on it, just in case any traffic comes in while I'm doing the configuration. Here it would not, but in a production network, it just might. I am also going to do something here. I find this helpful. Let me, um, I don't do that in every course, but I'm going to do it here because I know you know what the service timestamps are, and we'll be mentioning those in the course anyway. But I find it a little easier to read the messages when the dates and the time and the microseconds aren't there. So I like to do that for some of my more advanced courses. So we're going to do that here, and that way it's just a little easier, as you can see, to read the message when that entire timestamp is gone. We don't need the timestamps here. You, I like to leave them on during debugs, which is why I didn't turn them off for the debug, but for the log, I really don't want the timestamps there all the time. So let's see, I did shut the interface, so now let's go back to the interface, and I'm going to configure port security, and I'm rejected, and we know why from an earlier video, because the switch apparently is running all its ports in dynamic desirable, or maybe somebody put it in there statically, but what we're going to do is make it an access port, makes it a member of one VLAN and one VLAN only, and we should be in business. So let's try switch port port security again. Looks good, and now I'm going to use the MAC address option. Let's just do a quick refresher here on those options. And for MAC address, I have two different things I can do here. I can just put in a, an address statically, and that's going to be a secure MAC address, and we know the default is one, so it's actually going to be the default uh, the only secure MAC address. Sticky addresses we're going to cover in a separate lab. I want you to see those in action as well. But right now I will put in a MAC address that probably isn't going to match anybody, but definitely is not going to match the device we have on port 0 slash 1. So I've got my config there and everything's fine. What I'll do now, we want to test it. And let's see what happens when an address comes in that is non-secure. So, let's see, what do we do first? We will open that port first. And while that's opening, I'm going to come over here and send some pings from host 1. It might have been a little fast, but we're going to give it a moment here because sometimes the messages can take a few seconds to show up. But we've got some frames arriving at switch 1 now with non-secure MAC addresses. And there we go. The messages start pouring in. I know a little of them are off screen because I like to make the font as big as I can. But let's look at these four messages because one thing, a good real world lesson here I want to share with you is that when it comes to debug messages, console messages, that kind of thing, sooner or later you're going to see messages that you've never seen before. That might happen in this course a lot. <laughs> the thing is, just remain calm. You know, the debugs can be a little hard to read at times, but if you go through them, you'll see exactly what's going on. And especially with these particular messages, it tells us exactly what's going on. First off, the first message even mentions ERR disable. We know that's error disable. P secure violation error. Well, that supports security violation error. And it's detected, it even tells you where it is on FAST01, and it tells you it is putting that interface in error disabled state. We're missing the E there, but I think we can handle that. 
The very next message we get is port security be secure violation. And it's going to tell you point blank a security violation occurred. It's going to tell you the MAC address that triggered it and the port it wrote in on. So we go to the next message, which is pretty much what you'd expect because as the port is being put into error disabled state, the port will then come down logically and physically. The line protocol, the logical state in the interface goes to down and interface fast zero slash one change state to down. So everything has gone down. So we've got those four messages. We know what's going on. We've got a couple of other messages though that we could verify with because what can happen of course is this happens to someone else, which of course we prefer it to, instead of to us. And they call you and you've taken my course and you're CCNA security certified and you say, hey, I know what that is, but run a couple of commands to verify it for me. And first we'll go to show port security. And this should look familiar, but now check out under count security violation count one. So show port security is telling us here's the port and there's only one port we're working with right now. There's max secure address. We know that's the maximum number of secure addresses. Current address count, that's the one we configured statically. And then when R1 sent some frames in or host one sent some frames in, then we had a security violation. Um, let's see, what else can we run here? How about show interface fast 01? This is not port security related, but you could definitely walk into this or see it on a question. Hey, you know, here's the situation. This interface is down wide. And now this is, port security is not the only service that can put a port into error disabled state. It's one of a few, but it's not the only one. So you can't look at error disabled and say, oh, okay, I know this is port security. You don't know it from this output. But as soon as you see that error disabled, you know that some kind of service has put this port down. Because of course, if this port was shut down, what would this say? we'd see down, down, administratively down, and there's somewhere, right? Actually, we'd see fast ethernet zero slash one is administratively down. So of course, as security admins, as network admins, as certified professionals, we gotta be able to look at this command and say, okay, here is likely what the issue is. And since we don't see administratively down, we know it's not shut down, error disabled is the tip off there. There's one more show interface, or actually show port security command I wanna introduce you to right now. Show port security and then put the interface on the end of it. And this is great information because from top to bottom, port security, is it enabled on the port? Yes, so you can use this command as verification. What is the port status? It is secure and it is also shut down. The violation mode is shut down, that's the default we know that. You see the aging time and types, those are the defaults because we didn't change anything with those commands. Aging time, aging is actually disabled, but it is set to aging type absolute by default. Maximum, we're gonna, uh, the secure static address aging disabled, we know that's only gonna happen if we go in and enable that with the aging command as well, so we left that alone. Maximum MAC one, total MAC one, configured MAC one, configured MAC as you'd expect is the number of static addresses that we've configured, static secure addresses. Sticky MAC addresses still don't have any. Last source address, I love this information because this shows the MAC address of the last frames that came in, the source MAC address, and at the very end, it even shows you the VLAN. And the security violation account, excuse me, count again at the end is one. Now, let's say you just walk into this. What are we gonna do to fix it? And I know it's simple to ask that because you know we broke it so we know how to fix it. But in what order should we do the next couple of tasks? Because we have to fix this, you know, we gotta get that port up and running. And at the same time, we have, we have to fix the issue that caused it. And I wanna to talk to you about that for a moment right now because what you've gotta do is resolve the issue first and then reset the port. You always have to re uh, resolve the issue because if you open the port first, what's gonna happen? If you reset the port right now, it's gonna be fine until frames come in from host one again that trigger port security again and then we're right back where we started from. So at the beginning of the next video, we're gonna resolve the issue and then we're gonna reset the port and see what happens.